In addition to praying the rosary on the five first Saturdays of the month and making the communion of reparation, Our Lady has asked us to keep her company for 15 minutes, meditating upon one of the mysteries contained in her holy rosary. Today we join her in contemplating the proclamation of the kingdom and the call to conversion. In almost all the holy works of Christ, our Redeemer and Master, His most blessed and holy Mother concurred and took a part. This is related by Venerable Mary of Agrida. All that was necessary and sufficient for founding and preserving the Church was written by our evangelists. But the many hidden and great works of the exalted Queen have been revealed only to the saints and chosen ones. Even of these revelations, the greater number are better preserved for the beatific vision, where all the blessed shall see these great works manifested to them by the Lord, and where they will eternally praise him for such magnificent deeds worked through his Holy Mother. Or we join Saint Bridget in praising Our Lady. May you be blessed, O Lady Virgin Mary. You saw your son preaching, doing miracles and choosing the apostles. You were very much present. O Mother Mary, not only were you present, but you cooperated with your son. You helped him in his apostolate, supporting him, performing miracles. The proclamation of the kingdom was also performed by you, even if it was done in a more discreet and hidden manner. Venerable Mary continues, The Heavenly Lady had the whole doctrine of the evangelical law written in her heart. Nevertheless, she was as solicitous and attentive as a new disciple to the preaching and doctrine of her divine son, and she had instructed her angels to report to her, if necessary, the sermons of the master whenever she was absent. To the sermons of her son, she always listened on her knees. Thus, according to the utmost of her powers, showing the reverence and worship due to his person and doctrine. As she was aware at each moment of the interior operations of the soul of Christ and of his continual prayers to the Eternal Father for the proper disposition of the hearts of his hearers and for the growth of the seed of his doctrine into eternal life, the most loving mother join the Divine Master in his petitions and prayers and in securing for them the blessings of her most ardent and tearful charity. By her attention and reverence, she taught and moved others to appreciate duly the teaching and instructions of the Saviour of the world. O Blessed Mother Mary, I see in your disposition, your attentiveness to your Divine Son, a model of how I should respond to our Lord, what respect I should show to the Word of God in the Sacred Scripture, the teaching through the Magisterium, what awe and what wonder, what delight I should take in hearing the words of the Gospel at Holy Mass that moment of proclamation, of liturgical proclamation, let me greet those words with the same eagerness and devotion which you showed in the preaching of your Divine Son. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich teaches us of some of the events in our Lord's public mystery that we can meditate upon. She explains 
That night, I again saw Jesus praying with outstretched arms and again appearing on the Sea of Galilee to bear help in a storm. This time the distress was much greater and many more vessels were in danger. I saw Jesus laying his hand on the helm without the helmsman seeing him. The sea was calmed. The men were saved. How generous was our Lord in his miracles. How many of them are not recorded in the Holy Gospel. How many of them our Lady delighted in hearing reports of. Blessed Mother, let my heart be delighted in hearing the miracles of your Son that he continues to work. Another beautiful story shared by Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. Until far into the night, I saw Jesus with the old Essenian, Eliud of Nazareth. The holy man looked as if he would soon die of old age. He was no longer able for much. Indeed, he was almost bedridden. Jesus leaned on his arm at the bedside and talked with him. Eliud was entirely absorbed in God. What a beautiful scene that Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich relates to us of our Lord proclaiming the gospel to a Jewish priest near to his deathbed. Blessed Lord, preach now to the souls who are about to depart from this world. Give them a holy death such that you gave to Saint Joseph, your foster father, who died in your arms and in the arms of the Blessed Virgin. In this mystery of the proclamation, we turn towards Saint Mary Magdalene. Saint Gregory the Great tells us more of her. The one that Saint Luke calls a sinner and that St. John names Mary, is the same woman from which the Lord has cast out seven demons. And what are these seven, seven demons, if not the universality of all vices? Since seven days suffice to embrace the whole of time, the number seven rightly represents universality. Mary Magdalene had seven demons in her, for she was full of all vices. But now, having seen the stains that dishonoured her, she ran to wash herself at the source of mercy, without blushing in the presence of the guests. So great was her shame inside, that she could not see anything outside to blush. When I think of Mary Magdalene's repentance, I feel more like crying than saying something. Indeed, what heart, even if it were of stone, would not be moved by the example of penance that the tears of this sinner give us. She considered what she had done and did not want to limit what she was going to do. Here she enters among the guests, she comes uninvited and at the feast she offers her tears most openly. Learn with what pain this woman is burning. She who does not blush to cry even in the middle of a banquet. What humility in St. Mary Magdalene. And how I try to cover up even the smallest of my own faults, even tempting myself towards lying, giving in to the vices of deception. Oh, blessed Lord, help me to be like St. Mary Magdalene, caring in truth only of your thoughts, of your opinion, and being in a right relationship with you. Saint Gregory continues, Mary Magdalene brought an alabaster vase full of perfume and kneeling down before Jesus, she began to wart his feet with her tears and to wipe them with the hair of her head. And she kissed them and sprinkled them with perfume. It is very evident, my brethren, that this woman, formerly addicted to forbidden deeds, had used perfume 
to give her flesh a pleasant odour. What she had shamefully granted to herself, she now offered to God in a manner worthy of praise. She had desired the things of the earth by her eyes, but now mortifying with them with penance, she was crying. She had emphasized the beauty of her hair to adorn her face, but she was now using it to wipe away her tears. Her mouth had uttered words of pride, but now, kissing the feet of the Lord, she was pledging to walk in the humble footsteps of her Redeemer. Thus she turned her crimes into so many virtues, and all that in her had despised God in sin was put to the service of God in penance. Venerable Mary of Agrida explains Our Lady's love for St. Mary Magdalene. The Blessed Mother knew that the love of this woman for her son was most ardent, and that this great penitent was eminently chosen for the manifestation of the magnificence of God's mercy towards men. Most Holy Mary distinguished her before the other women in her familiar company and enlightened her in regard to most exalted mysteries by which she inflamed still more the love of Magdalene towards Jesus and towards herself. The holy penitent consulted the heavenly lady in regard to her desire of retreating into solitude in order to live in continual contemplation and penance and the sweetest mother instructed her in the deep mysteries of solitary life. This life she afterwards embraced with the consent and blessing of the Queen. Later on, Mary visited her in her retreat in person, and by means of the angels often encouraged and consoled Magdalene in the horrors of the desert. The other women, who were in the company of Jesus, were much favoured by the Most Blessed Mother. All of them, and all the disciples of the Lord, experienced her incomparable kindness, and they were filled with an intense devotion and affection towards the Mistress and Mother of Grace. They drew of the treasures of grace from her as from a storehouse, where God had laid up his gifts for the whole human race. Perhaps we might wish to know of some of the miracles of Our Lady during the public ministry of Christ. We see the many miracles she's accomplished in our own time. Does that not show us how many there must have been in the days of our Lord? Venerable Mary tells us, The innumerable and vast miracles of the Great Queen during the public preaching of Christ our Lord are not recorded in the Gospels or in other histories. For the evangelist spoke only of the wonders performed by Christ in so far as was useful to establish the faith of the Church. According to what has been given to me to understand, it is certain that she brought about not only many miraculous conversions, but she cured the blind and the sick, and called the dead to life. That this should be so was proper for many reasons. On the one hand, she was the assistant in the principal work for which the incarnate word came into the world, namely, in his preaching and his redemption. For thereby the Eternal Father opened up the treasures of his omnipotence and infinite goodness, manifesting them in the Divine Word and in the Heavenly Mother. On the one hand, she, as his mother, was to resemble her son in the working of miracles, increasing the glory of both. For in this way she accredited the dignity and doctrine of her son and eminently and most efficaciously assisted him in his mystery. That these miracles should remain concealed was due both to the disposition of divine providence 
and to the earnest request of Mary herself. Hence, she performed them with such a wise secrecy that all the glory redounded to the exaltation of the Redeemer in whose name and virtue they were carried out. We see in Our Lady, in her proclamation, in her working of miracles, an example for our own apostolates, realizing we must decrease, Christ must increase. Like Our Lady, we wish to be instruments of our Lord, magnifying our Lord and pointing all people to him as a source of light which we endeavour to magnify. <laughs>